it is a real honor to be here and to be a part of this really great event. Um, I'm going to introduce to you my husband, Randall Moore. He's going to talk to you a little bit about how we get around and why we're here today. I have to use your mic, I guess. Well, hello, everybody. Woo! I had a handheld mic, but it's not working, apparently. So, I'm just going to go like this. And now I don't have any mic. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me like this? Do I need a mic? You guys can't all hear me like that. Maybe the streamers out there in the interwebs couldn't hear me. So that's my job. Um, sometimes that means booking hotel rooms. Sometimes it means uh, trying to find a place we can eat breakfast at at 2 p.m. Um, <laughs> it's varied for sure. So when we had this really nice video set up that showed all of us touring around all over the country and how many miles we drive and all that stuff. Maybe we'll play it at the end now. In any case, um, we travel, we do about 200 shows a year. There we go, all right. And we spend over half the year on the road. Um, we travel um, in about 45 different states, and when we decided that we were going to go on tour all that time and spend that much time on the road, we had two big concerns. The first concern was we were concerned about the amount of carbon emissions and our footprint that we were going to have from driving all that, all that driving. So. We have a big van and a trailer, and we don't get great gas mileage, and so we were really, you know, concerned about that. So we needed to solve that problem. The second problem we had, as a independent band, um, we're self-funded, we're independent, we pay for everything we have ourselves. Um, <coughs> we ha we had the concern of trying to make our small business more profitable. So we looked around for a bunch of options. We talked about trying to tour on bikes, public transportation. None of that was possible because we have so much gear to haul around and none of us are very good at riding bikes for that long. So <laughs> that wasn't a possibility. So what we decided to do was convert our diesel van to run on used vegetable oil, which is what this is. Can you guys all see that? This is uh, used cooking oil from a restaurant, a ch fried chicken restaurant, incidentally, in Ann Arbor. And we converted our van. The diesel engine was actually invented to run on peanut oil. And after Rudolph Diesel died, uh, the petroleum industry actually co-opted the diesel engine because petroleum diesel at the time was cheaper and it was also more plentiful. So they converted it to run on petroleum, but it was originally intended to run on this. So by going backwards in time and learning from our past, we uh, built a system and installed it in our van, and this is how it works. So that's me right there behind a restaurant. I am pumping dirty fried chicken oil, the same oil actually, you can see the color is the same, uh, into the back of our van. Our van is equipped with two extra fuel tanks in addition to our standard diesel tank. So what we have, I'm pumping the oil out, we've got a portable gas pump, it hooks up to the electric, electric, electrical system in our van, and we fill up this first tank. Now the problem with using vegetable oil as a fuel is that it's too thick to flow through the injectors in an engine. So what we do is we apply heat to the oil. That metal rod in there is actually a heat exchanger that takes hot coolant from the engine and it cycles it through this first tank and it heats the oil up and makes it very thin. It looks really delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All of my clothes are stained with vegetable oil. This is my shaggier twin brother. Um, so what, what happens then, we actually get the oil in the tank. We have a pumping system that actually pumps the oil through this first two micron filter here and it cleans the oil down to two microns, so very fine, so we don't get any chicken bones or taco shells or anything like that into our, into our grease, into our fuel. Then it goes to the front of the van, and we have this system of gauges set up here that actually show you how much oil is in each tank and also the filtration process. So we can pour oil right into that first tank, flip a switch, and it cleans it down to two microns. Actually, it does it twice, so the oil is very clean and it's very hot by the time it gets to our engine. So what happens is you start the van on diesel uh, in the morning when it's cold outside. Diesel has a, uh, vegetable oil has about a 20% lower combustion rate than diesel fuel. So you have to start it on diesel in the morning. Once the engine is warm and we're up to our operating temperature on the, uh, the gauge down there, once it's warm, we flip the switch and it activates a bypass valve and we actually drive on the grease for the duration of our trip. So like 98% of our trip. 
We recently drove from Key West, Florida to Ann, or Ann Arbor, Michigan to Key West, Florida on one gallon of fuel. The rest is all um, vegetable oil that we gathered from restaurants. So, down there. we've been able to achieve both of our goals. Number one, we wanted to have a much lower carbon impact. And we also needed to support our small business and make it more profitable. In the last four years, roughly, we've driven 140,000 miles on used vegetable oil, straight vegetable oil, SVO, it's referred to. <clears throat> the financial savings based upon the average cost of a gallon of diesel over that time period, which is $3.97, has saved us over $32,000 as a small business. The environmental savings, <laughs> thanks. Running on waste vegetable oil, actually, we get 85 to 90% less carbon emissions out of our tailpipe than we do running on petroleum diesel. There's also very little to no soot or carbon particulate matter coming out of the tailpipe, like the black stuff that gets all over the tailpipe. Occasionally, a French fry might fly out. <laughs> That's actually the number one question that people ask me, what does it smell like and how many French fries fall out of it? We've been able to estimate uh, using a vehicle carbon calculator in that time period that many miles and have determined that our to total carbon offset has been 70.29 metric tons of carbon in that time period. To put it in perspective, that is a metric ton of carbon right there. There's our human perspective guy. It's a box, 20, you can picture a box 27 feet on all sides and that is one metric ton of carbon times over 70 of those that we've saved from spewing into the atmosphere. The same number of trees, so 3.6 trees planted equals one ton of metric carbon saved in terms of the amount of carbon taken out of the atmosphere. So by driving on waste vegetable oil and using an alternative fuel, and this is a proven technology, we're doing it. We've been able to uh, basically plant 253 trees uh, just by driving around. So <clears throat> we were able to solve both of our problems. We were make, able to make the band more profitable. We we're also able to dramatically lower our carbon footprint. <clears throat> 